brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFP LP 101.9 FM. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are going to our meeting. To, uh, first of all, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, this is Eric Larson, Chairman for the uh, Eau Claire Plan Commission. Obviously, this is a little unusual. We haven't uh, done this kind of meeting before, so I beg everyone's patience. I apologize for us being a few minutes late uh, getting things set up here. Let's start by calling the roll um, to make sure that we have everyone. I'm going to unmute all the microphones, and then I will call the roll, starting with uh, Commissioner Brenholt. Present. Commissioner uh, Granlund. Present. Commissioner Gregert. Here. Commissioner uh, Wolfgram. Here. Commissioner Obeyed. Here. Commissioner Seymour. Here. Uh, Commissioner uh, Christofferson. Here. And Commissioner Peterson. Here. Um, was everyone on the commission able to hear all of the roll call? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, but but if but if you can speak up, that would be appreciated. Okay. One other uh, announcement I'd like to make is that I think we will be at, when we vote, we will call the roll as opposed to doing a voice voice vote just to make sure everyone gets their chance to vote yay or nay on each item. So this meeting is being broadcast live by v Valley Media Works on Charter 994 WRFP LP 101.9 and online at valleymediaworks.org. The Plan Commission attempts to conduct its public hearings in a relatively informal manner within the constraint that we must deal with the issues before us in an orderly and business-like fashion. We give the applicant an opportunity to speak first, and then others either for or against the proposal are each permitted to speak once. We do ask requests that everyone restrict their comments to the issues before us, avoid unnecessary repetition, and be prudent in the use of time. We want to be sure that we have adequate time to review and discuss all items with equal diligence. Um, attendees, you should have somewhere on your screen the ability to raise your hand when you would like to, to say something, and then I will unmute you and, and call you. When you uh, are able to speak to the commission, please give your name and address before uh, proceeding with your comments. There are two items for a public hearing today. Uh, they're both at the beginning of the, meeting, of the uh, item list. So we'll start with item number one, which is a public hearing for recommendation to the City Council for, uh, to recommend approval of rezoning properties from TR1A to C3P and R3P, adopt a general development plan for commercial and multifamily residential, and approve the certified survey, survey map with right-of-way dedication. Mr. Allen. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the uh, commission. Uh, at the moment, we are uh, working through the uh, best way to show the slides to everybody not currently present and not watching on uh, the streaming Valley Media Works. So um, I will talk in a extended manner, if that's okay, <laughs> to start. Uh, but I will perhaps ask Mr. Uh, Nelson to advance at least one slide, and perhaps two, if possible. That's not possible. No, thank, thank you. How about one more? Thank you. Excellent. Uh, what we're going to be going through here is um, a, quite, a, quite a bit of slides actually at, at some point, but uh, there's quite a bit to talk about um, in terms of uh, the proposal, the kind of history of the project, and the, the uh, property itself. 
Uh, the request again is to rezone uh, the properties shown there on the, on the overhead. This is uh, located at the western terminus of Orch Avenue, immediately adjacent to uh, Interstate 94 on the north and Lowe's Creek uh, to the south. Uh, the property is currently zoned TR1A, and the applicant is looking to rezone that to C3P and R3P, uh, which would also include uh, adopting a general development plan for both a commercial lot and multifamily development, and then also to approve a four lot certified survey map. Uh, the applicant is HK Development LLC, along with their uh, surveyor and engineer, every survey and engineering. Again, uh, looking to uh, rezone the property, which is about 41.58 acres in size. It's currently vacant, as you see here on the overhead. Uh, the four lot CSM would divide this into one lot of uh, one commercial lot of 4.63 acres, three residential lots of two acres, 3.35 acres, and the large uh, phase one and beyond uh, currently presented as 30.14 acres. Uh, the applicant did provide a narrative, quite a lengthy narrative, uh, outlining their proposal along with the preliminary site plan and building elevations, and again, the CSM as well. Uh, you may recall the applicant previously submitted applications for review. They were recommended for approval by the plan commission, and they were subsequently denied by the city council back in December. So working with uh, the applicant, uh, staff has uh, met with them several times since then to look at some modifications to their proposal, which is before you here this evening. Uh, the new applications propose uh, new residential layouts and mix, which includes the change of two lots on the north side from a proposed commercial zoning instead to a senior or memory care housing. And not to interrupt Mr. Nelson again, but I have bounce ahead of So this shows the proposed uh, rezoning request and the lot layout as it relates to the CSM as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll park here just for a moment and, and, and discuss this a little bit more in depth. Uh, rather than previously considered three commercial lots with a mix of uses on the north side, uh, the applicant is now proposing only one commercial lot, which is the, uh, the pink colored one there in the far northeast corner of the prop property. Uh, and that lot is proposed right now uh, as it stands as a future 90 to 100 room hotel. The applicant does note, however, that uh, no formal commitments have been made at this point. Uh, lots two and three, immediately to the west of that, were previously proposed as a mix of commercial uses. And those are now being considered for senior living, memory care, or community-based residential facilities, also known as CBRFs. Again, the applicant notes that no formal commitments have been made uh, for those as well. Uh, however, if uh, those two lots, lots two and three, would be constructed as proposed, they would consist of one building per lot uh, with 30 to 50 rooms in each. Uh, the proposed residential lot, <coughs> the largest residential lot, which is lot four, uh, would have approximately 13.82 acres of developable area, preserving approximately 16.32 acres as passive open space along Lowe's Creek. Uh, this new proposal is submitted as nine buildings in six phases, and we'll show an overview of that here shortly. Uh, the first three phases with <coughs> one building per phase would include 60 units per building. The units would consist of studio, one, and two bedroom apartments, al along with some that would have direct entry. Uh, one change uh, uh, for the proposal before you this evening from what was originally proposed uh, several months ago uh, the applicant states that 10% of the total project, approximately 23 units, would be allocated to what they call affordable and workforce housing units. Uh, this would be aimed at renters with incomes at the 60 to 100% of area median income. Half of those, 23, approximately, would be uh, aimed at 60 to 80% of uh, AMI renters. The other half 
would be 80 to 100% EMI renters. Uh, future phases are proposed to transition downward in density with phases four and five, buildings four through seven built as 10 unit buildings, and phase six, final phase, buildings eight and nine being more of the traditional fourplexes. If Mr. Nelson could help us out one more time. Advance perhaps one more. There we go, thank you. And actually, this is probably uh, the best uh, slide to, to kind of uh, have a discussion on or uh, around. This lays out the proposed uh, uh, full build out, again, in the general development plan concept. Again, uh, site plan would still need to be come forward uh, for each of the phases and each of the lots. So this is, again, it's just a uh, general development plan level of layout before you hear this evening. So uh, another question that had come up on um, the previous proposal was that of density. Uh, density is uh, naturally reduced uh, simply because of the commercial uh, designations being um, no longer in play for lots two and three. Uh, however, the applicant also did uh, slightly reduce density through expanding some of the buildable area. Still retain the same number of units originally proposed, but um, spreading them out and uh, proposing them again this kind of uh, downward uh, trajectory in terms of density from moving from east to west. Are we sharing that? Excellent. I believe so. Thank you. It'd be kind of helpful to tell us. Okay. So. Perfect. So hopefully that is still working. Um, and again, using the billable area of 13.82 acres, it's a density of about 16.5 units per acre. Uh, in the R3 zoning, 21 units per acre is the maximum, so it is uh, certainly less than that. Uh, the, again, the general development plan, as proposed, does appear to be compliance with the density standards. Again, this is just a very slight reduction from original proposal from 16.56 units per acre to 16.5 units. Uh, again, just going back to the rezoning petition or application here, uh, the zoning code does state that uh, a rezoning petition or application may not be resubmitted for a period of one year if it is, quote, in substantially the same form. And again, due to the changes in lots two and three, the density and building type transition of lot four, the large lot there on the south, and further information provided with regards to traffic, which we'll talk about here shortly, and surrounding language compatibility, um, again, including the, the narrative and other information provided application. Uh, staff does find this application to be in compliance with that code section. Uh, the balance of the staff report um, won't get into a lot of detail other than to say that uh, uh, Planning Commission does need to find the rezoning request in compliance with the comprehensive plan and provide some additional information uh, related to multifamily development in the comp plan. Uh, the general development plan itself um, talking about some of the proposed kind of deviations or uh, modifications from the underlying zoning. Uh, again, the, in this case, the applicant is requesting this plan development due to what they call a possibility that one or more of the buildings may exceed some of the following, and I've just provided a quick list based on their narrative, uh, may exceed the allowable building height, which is 45 feet. Again, that most likely would be in relation to those first few buildings in phase one, uh, most likely due to uh, the steep slopes down to Lowe's Creek. So perhaps not every grade to roof line may be 45 feet, but portions of buildings may. Uh, the allowable pervious surface coverage, again, because of the uh, density proposed, not necessarily units, but in terms of the the parking and where it's being placed due to topography and other uh, site issues. Uh, there may be some pervious surface coverage, uh, kind of overages, particularly based on multifamily design manual, which then is also related to another possible request uh, for that expansion or reduction of open space, I should say, in the parking and developed area in the front yard. So uh, the reduction, in other words, the reduction of 40% front yard green space for the multifamily design name. So those are kind of two and one in terms of possibilities. You can see some of that in terms of how the parking is laid out, trying to maximize the 
uh, location of the buildings in relation to Lowe's Creek, as well as the, uh, the topography there, and then more or less kind of front-loading a lot of the parking area, uh, which then again kind of exceeds that 40% um, uh, maximum that's typically provided for the multifamily design manual uh, for parking in the front yard. Again, that though did not provide specifics. Again, that uh, is a possibility and would be required certainly through the site plan uh, or as a condition of approval here. So with that, again, a lot to talk about since there's a lot uh, has changed since you last saw this. Uh, a lot has uh, transpired in terms of what the applicant is proposing here this evening. Uh, again, in determining conformance with the comprehensive plan, the Planning Commission should also consider the project phasing, which you see here in the applicant did provide a kind of page-by-page -page summary of each of the phases. And also review the mix of residential building types, particularly related to lot four here, the larger lot. Uh, again, the, the, the unit types or building types certainly are different than what you had previously seen. And uh, in staff's um, review seem to be more in line with that transition to a less dense route from east uh, to west. Uh, again, the possible uh, assisted living or senior living memory care on lots two and three are also certainly a change uh, for your consideration here this evening. So this item will be considered by the City Council at a similar public hearing a uh, week from site on April 13th. And again, final site plan approval for each phase or combination as we come forward uh, will be required and reviewed in the future. With that, um, do you want to um, turn it over to Leah? We're able to have her get unmuted and come in. But if this might be an opportunity too, to make sure everybody's able to view this, uh, see if there are any questions perhaps, Mr. Chair, before we get into the Let traffic and engineering. <laughs> Yes, let's let's do that. Uh, are there any commission members who have questions for Mr. Allen regarding the first part of the presentation here? Just raise your hand if if so. And I see none. So let's. Uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner uh, Christofferson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in the packet, there was there was information that there may be some underground parking, but I didn't discern that from. Is there? Where is this underground parking going to take place? Good question. Uh, you can see, uh, it's kind of at the ends of each of the first three buildings. Uh, see the far east side of lot four there um, kind of connected to both uh, kind of pink hatch building and the blue hatch building connecting those two there's underground connection there and then in the north end of the I guess, orange or yellow building there the far northwest part of phase one there so you just see what you see up front is more I guess kind of you know I guess uh, say temporary parking but what is there parking and such you know, majority would be for residents underneath. Do so, you know what the number is? How many? Do not know. No, that's not been determined yet. Um, uh, they did not provide that at this level. That, that would be site plan uh, specifics. But uh, it certainly seems as though there will be ample parking in each of the phases as presented. Okay. For are there any other questions from the commission at this point? All right. We will uh, move on to Ms. Ness. You have been unmuted. Please go ahead. All right. Thank you. Um, I did get an email from Mr. Erickson and Mr. Hagen that they are trying to call in and have been unsuccessful so far. And so they wanted me to relay that message. Okay. I did see Mr. Hagen on, I see Mark Erickson on the list here. And, uh, and Gunnar Hagen. 
I see them as attendees. But go okay. ahead, Ms. Sure. Ness, we'll, we'll cross that bridge. <laughs> I will enter into my traffic analysis here. Um, in February of 2020, an initial review document was submitted to the city and WSDOT for review. Uh, this was request of the initial development that was being brought forward. We moved forward and identified a scope for an abbreviated TIA and received that TIA last week. After looking at that initially, um, there are some proposed improvements along Larch Avenue. Um, overall, the analysis looked at the proposed commercial development on site, and then it also looked at the off site uh, proposed restaurant that was identified in the Fleet Farm TIA and also at the hotel um, proposed convention center expansion. Then in the future, it also looked at the proposed multifamily use to the west of the, the uh, site that we're discussing tonight. Based on the timeline, analysis was done in the years 2023 and 2035. Um, initially, the build adds 110 to 150 trips during the peak hour. Breaking that down, it means about 60 vehicles would be entering and 60 vehicles exiting during an hour. So about two additional vehicles per minute during the peak hour are being added to this intersection. Um, and you can imagine that there is capacity for two additional vehicles per minute at this intersection. Um, when we look into the future at the full build volume, the additional traffic added to the intersection ranges from 240 to 390 vehicles in the peak hour. That equates to approximately four to seven vehicles entering the intersection or going through the intersection during that minute during the peak hour. Um, the off-site traffic was estimated and included in the total traffic in both 2023 and 2035, and that adds 155 to 215 trips per peak hour. So about three to four vehicles additional to that intersection in the peak hour. If we go to the next slide, we'll see the results of the analysis. And when we look at intersection operations, uh, we look at the level of service and queue length um, to review the operations. The level of service is a quantitative measure that refers to the overall quality of flow at the intersection ranging from very good, which would be a level of service A, to very poor, which is represented by a level of service F, or um, very low functioning intersection. For the purposes of this study, you can see in the eastbound and westbound approaches on Lorch Avenue, the existing level of service was D at its lowest during the peak hour. So that would be considered acceptable, a level of service D or better. Um, and then going from top to bottom on this slide, we're looking at the 2023 background traffic and all those operations show um, level of service D or better on Lorch Avenue with a longest queue length going eastbound on the left of 165 feet. That's really the movement that is impacted the most by the development. Um, when we go to 2023 with total traffic, so that's with the offsite and the development traffic, the first phase, you can see that eastbound left turn queue increases to 215 feet. So about two additional vehicle car lengths um, it increases by. And then when we get out to the 2035 total traffic, uh, that eastbound left turn queue is up to 370 feet. So it does pass the intersection um, closest to State Trunk Highway 93, the Ryder Road, and 
the recommendation is to have a do not block intersection sign and pavement marking there to uh, make sure that vehicles can access that location. And if we go to the next slide, um, there you can see kind of where the Rider Road is located just west of State Trunk Highway 93. And um, overall, the existing street, Lorch Avenue right now is a rural cross section. That is proposed to be improved with the capital improvement projects in the next couple of years, which would take it to a curb and gutter uh, street section through there with sidewalk and trail along it. Um, therefore, to the west uh, of the existing Lorch Avenue at this proposed development, we are recommending curb and gutter with sidewalks and a trail. Um, the existing water main is of adequate size. Sanitary is adequate size and has the depth needed for the majority of the development. But as you go farther to the west end of the development, it may require lift station. And uh, the utilities would be constructed under a development agreement with the city. Uh, stormwater calculations need to be provided showing that the stormwater detention facility and the storm drain piping is adequately sized. And that's a typical request uh, that we have with most of our developments. And um, there may be some 20% helps, which the developer would need to coordinate through the city and the Western Wisconsin Regional Plan Commission. And we work with those on, on that development side of things. So if we have any questions, I'd be willing to take those on the traffic or utilities. Okay, any questions from the commission for Ms. Ness? I'll give it just a second to make sure nobody's having trouble raising their hand. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ness. You're welcome. And... Uh, it sounds like there are two people representing the applicant here. Can uh, whoever wants to speak raise their hand, please? Well, let's do this. I will start by unmuting Mr. Erickson. Oops. Okay. Oops, I gotta mute. Hello? Yeah, Mr. Erickson, did you want to speak on this uh, proposal? I did, and you have some magic over there, Mr. Larson, because I've never gotten my microphone to work on my computer for two years, so well. congratulations. <laughs> I, I won't take responsibility for that. Go ahead, sir. Well, uh, start that, with okay. your name and who um, you represent. Yes, I would like to speak on behalf of uh, Good Evening uh, Planning Commission, um, where we all are right now today, and uh, thank you for your time on reconsidering this matter. Um, am I speaking loud enough for everybody? Yes, we can hear you just fine. Okay. Um, as uh, Mr. Uh, Allen and Ms. Ness did a beautiful job once again in uh, talking about the points of this project um, and Mr. Allen's noting of we have been here with this project before. Uh, City Council did find a little, I would say, need to know more information in the aspect of traffic. And um, that's what we have done to uh, step it up a little bit. Ms. Uh, Ness went into that in pretty good detail um, of, of all the things that we have found since our last uh, call it go around or stepping up to take this project through. Um, with that being said, um, I greatly appreciate your time once again being heard. The changes we have done to uh, help make the plan, let's call it a little bit more palatable, a little bit more uh, consistent with the zoning is with regards to uh, the diversification of buildings. Now, grant the first three don't look like they're all that diverse, but they're going to be dressed up in an appropriate color palette scheme that uh, over time, because this is going to take some time to build this map, 
passive project. Over time, they'll all look and have their unique characteristics. But as then we move westerly, uh, we've gone into some different building types, uh, reduced the density as far as we uh, go to the far west line. And then the other change has been mentioned already is lots two and three on the north side are now deemed R, R3P um, to better suit to put those potential build outs up there. Um, so, you know, uh, I, there's you folks uh, were as kind and uh, cordial as well as thoughtful to approve this back in um, would have been early December, I reckon, um, and of last year. And there's not been any radical game changing plans related to your approval. As a matter of fact, we've we perceive we've made it better, understood more about the traffic, and um, and I think we got a little bit better layout going along, and everything um, is going to flow pretty darn pretty darn swell with uh, when it's all said and done. So I I guess I'll I don't want to waste everybody's precious time in this unique situation here, but I'll see if anyone's got any additional questions back to me, or um, we can maybe flag Mr. Gunnar Hagen down. He's also I believe on too. Let's see first if there are any questions for Mr. Erickson from the commission. Commissioner Wolf Graham. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes. Yes, I can. So thank you, Chairperson Larson, and I would like to request that my comments of support be read into the minutes if that's possible. Okay, uh, we will have a, a, a time for comments and uh, when we have a motion on the floor right now. Do you have any questions for Mr. Erickson? So do I make my comments in support to this development now? Uh, no, I don't think there's any, if anyone has any objection to adding her comments to the minutes, uh, please indicate so. But what we will get to comments after we have a motion on the floor. Right now it's just questions for Mr. Erickson. Okay. Okay, so uh, no questions from anyone else for Mr. Erickson? Mr. Larson? Mr. Uh, Commissioner Christofferson has a question. Oh, okay, great, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I really, I read this uh, proposal with a lot of interest because you've done some, some really interesting things that provided much more complete information. Um, one of the things that I'm curious about um, is that you've taken kind of a hands-off approach to the commercial on the north side of this property. That uh, you've had a lot of conversations but are kind of leaving it to someone who may buy the property and who may have an idea. Can you give us some idea of how you're going to pursue selling this or where it is on your um, list of important items as this development moves forward? Well, that's a wonderful question. And um, this is Mark again, the Geeky Engineer. So I only know so much. Um, you know, when it comes to the commercial aspect of it, and I think that's where you're kind of on the northern portions of the road, uh, refresh me, um, there's, there's been some indications of some thoughts of what could go up there. But now with that being said, um, you know, if you look across the street at the, the Mills Flea Farm, the Farmer Fleet Flea Farm, they have an outlot up there and it, it's up to this day, it's not even determined an outlot, a buildable commercial lot that doesn't really have a prescribed end use yet. It's kind of waiting for, that takes a different, uh, once again, a little outside my wheelhouse by, by all means, ma'am, but it takes a little special character to see what is being built out there to find out how their business or entity kind of fits in there. Um, as you duly noted on lot one, we've 
uh, as casually as informative as we can be, have identified a hotel. Uh, with that being said, there's there's a, that that hotel fits there pretty darn well for the adjacent usages of the land. Now, will it be a hotel? I guess I I can't say that with earnest. It's it's going to be on the open market, and uh, someone might have a much better idea for us and the community of what goes there, you know. So I, I hope that didn't muddy it up or, you know, these these folks and the developers, are they're into the, uh, the multifamily rentals. And so they're going to stick with what they know best, and that is the south side of the road or what is uh, currently known as Lot 4. Um, they, they have feelers out there for the north half but no one has a, a, a set stone of what they're going to be at ma'am thank you sorry so long with it there and uh commissioner greg has a question go ahead jeremy go ahead jeremy thank you chair um this is Jeremy Gregory. Um, Mr. Erickson, uh, the question is mostly related to the orientation of the buildings. That I see that they're essentially been completely redesigned from what we saw before. Um, and I guess my specific question related to that is, do you feel like the uh, if phases four and five, there would be a way for the parking spaces that are facing the park to be on the lower checkering side of the buildings instead of the park side and then they kind of, you know, soften the, the space between the buildings and the park. Jeremy, thank you. Uh, you're, uh, you're a very observant one, and that's a great question. Uh, like Mr. Jeremy Garrett said, is there has been a little difference in the orientation of buildings. They have changed. We are still trying to make that uh, connection for the people to one of the advents of this new map is it's, it's pretty hard to see, but we have uh, identified a uh, deed restricted easement on the back side that encompasses about 16 acres of lot forest 30 give or take 30 acres that'll be used for trails and uh bike well, bike paths trails stormwater ponds for not only lot four but for lot two and three and we're trying to provide that connectivity of uh these folks that would potentially reside in two and three to use this area as theirs too uh, I'm going, that's kind of the first question, sir. Did that kind of answer a little bit of the connectivity? I know it wasn't uh, maybe the best, but I, w I would like to try to address your second part, too, then. Sure. Okay, your second part with regards to those buildings there is, uh, the, quite honestly, we had all that asphalt in the uh, north ends of the building, more immediate to, more immediate to Lorch Avenue and the Buildings were uh, back a little farther, um, and with that being said, it, it, there were some opinions out there that the buildings were all of a sudden too removed from the Lorch Avenue. Now, granted, we didn't mind, as in developers, we didn't mind them to be a little cozier up to the, the conservancy and all that, but their setback was getting to be too great, and they were potentially getting too much uh, impervious surface as a percentage. Now, granted, we're doing a PUD here, but they're getting to be a large offset of impervious surface in the front end. Those buildings will ultimately need to have a little bit of a type of a bump out um, on that south edge to the extent that we could drastically reduce that by 60 to 70 percent if we were to move the parking lot northerly to Lurch Avenue side, sir. So that would be these, if you guys have seen that flow chart of the kind of the scheduling, these buildings are uh, the ones that he's mentioning above the, uh, beyond the first three are, they're out there ways on the calendar, let's let's call it that. Um, and they would ultimately have to be all uh, independently approved in a site plan that is conditioned uh, conditionally close to what the general development plan that we're petitioning here would be. So with that being said, 
things may change, uh, folks. That the buildings may come back a little bit. They may go up. We may have uh, turf stone parking that won't be so hard and impervious, you know. So there's a lot of things happening perhaps in the next nine years when we get to those buildings um, that we'd hope to, let's face it, make it all better, make it a little bit better and then handle it on a maybe a slight amendment to the general development plan to finalize it that would have a, a little different alteration. And that's, that's just to say the, the main three big buildings, the 60 unit buildings, those are those are going to happen the way they are. But as time goes on and we get down that road, uh, there may be a, a need to do something different in, innovatively or position wise or what have you. So, um, that that's where they are right now, Jeremy. Is that uh, we were getting a lot of impervious up in the front. They pushed the buildings back a little more offset than the rest of the stuff was, um, and so we we did try to compensate that to make it a little flow a little bit better there, sir. Okay. Thank you. I, I do have another question, if that's all right. Yeah, I um, got in for it. Go for it. Yes, sir. Um, this one's related to the affordable housing uh, that was mentioned, the 10% being workforce or affordable. Uh, what buildings are you planning on having those in, those units, presumably the phase one and these two buildings, or uh, Jeremy, my understanding is it is going to be in phase one, two, and three buildings. And to the ten percent, is it going to be an even ten percent per building being built, or is it going to be um, a percentage per building? I I know that there's there's talks. The talks have all been to keep it in the easterly uh, three bigger buildings there. That is the talks right now. So I don't know of any other plan. Um, I guess 10% is 10% in how it's spread out in the units, you know, sir. Um, so is there some flexibility in that? I guess that's, I think that's reasonable to decipher it as being that. And, but the, the, I think their first pitch and I, maybe we can have Gunnar raise his hand, Gunnar Hagen, the other developer on here or the developer on here. But I thought it was, uh, Prescribed in units one, two, the buildings one, two, and three. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission for Mr. Erickson? Okay, I see none. Let me just check with Mr. Hagen. Uh, hold on. It's going to take me a second here. So I'm going to mute Mr. Erickson. And I see Mr. Hagen has his hand up. Good evening, Mr. Hagen. Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. All right. Um, just to uh, go back to couple of the questions regarding lots two and three and yes they, they will be put on the open market um, for basically anyone to purchase and uh, assuming that we've been talking with uh, with the assisted living group and if they potentially go there then that's what will be put there but um, we can't guarantee that and with it, without being zoned nobody's going to put uh, pen to paper and commit to anything. Um, so once we get it zoned, we'll, we'll put it out there for marketability. Um, then as far as affordability, that 10%, we will, we're will we going to try to do that in all phases, starting with phase one. And so if you allocate 228 units, 10% of that is approximately 22 units. So um, we, we don't want to overload one building. We kind of want to do um, a percentage in each building. So once we once we finish to the west, um, there'll be a little little caveat of affordable in each each building. Okay. Other than that, does anybody have any further questions for me? Thank you. Uh, any questions from the commission for Mr. Hagen, Gunnar Hagen? 
I see none. Thank you, Mr. Hagan and Mr. Erickson. Did everybody uh, get that? Yep, we got you. Thank you. So I will uh, now see if there's any members of the public who are at this meeting to, uh, to comment on this proposal. Ms. Mosley. Ms. Mosley, can you hear me? You. Go ahead, start with your name and address, please. My name is Judy Mosley. I reside at 2230 Trimble Street in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, 54701. And what, what do you, what comments would you like to make? I did send an email this afternoon because I wasn't sure I'd be able to make the technology work, but I am happy to report that we managed to connect. Um, I am the co-chair of the Jonah Affordable Housing Task Force Committee in Eau Claire, and this is one of the developments that um, we have recently discussed. Uh, the plan commission may remember that earlier we had opposed this development because it didn't have any affordability component. But I'm happy to report that we met with the developers and they were quite accommodating and, and really worked hard to develop an affordability component into the development. So our task force is quite happy to support this current proposal. Um, we really think these developers have worked hard. They've listened to the community input. They have done what they can to add an affordability component, and that's only going to help the community to add more affordable housing units. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. Are there any members of the commission who have a question for Mr. Uh, for Ms. Mosley? Thank you. Uh, I see there's another member of the public with their hand up just a moment. Mr. Fraze, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Start with your name and address, please. D. Fraze, 7155, Highway 53, south of Eau Claire. Thank you. Uh, what comments would you like to make? Well, so... First of all, the land directly to the west of this uh, development, <clears throat> that land is owned by me. And there was an overview uh, on the slides there. You guys had an overview that, that, that showed part of that. If somebody could go through the slides and find that. There you go. And I don't know where the yellow proposed, oh, go back, yeah. I don't know where the, the yellow uh, portion of that, the proposed multifamily part, that's, that's mine. Um, so I'm not sure where that yellow square came from. It's a vacant you know, field right now. It is not annexed into the city yet, but it, it obviously will be. Um, so I have not heard one word about this land directly to the west. I haven't, you know, there's all these studies going on for the traffic and that, and the, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna put in so many units on the development there that it just shuts mine right out? Um, you know, I, I'm kind of the, 
let's be fair type of guy, whatever, whatever the developers are allowed to do, the land directly to the west should be allowed to do. So, you know, and, and I, I looked at the development, the, 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 their last development had, it was like 228 units. This new proposed development has 228 units. I don't see, you know, where, where they're really doing anything different. Um, you know, and then lots one, two, and three, that they uh, actually, I think that there's going to be a whole lot of people there. The uh, mention on on people in those, um, you know. So I don't know. It's it's just a real big concern of mine, of course, because I own that land to the to the west. So if this multi multi, you know, these huge buildings go up. What's going to happen to the land to the west? I don't understand why it all can't be on one same playing field. So I think you understand where I'm coming from. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Freeze. I see uh, Ms. Ness has her hand up. Let's start with her. Ms. Ness? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I do want to ad address the comment about the land to the west that is included in the traffic impact analysis as future off-site development. And it was proposed as multifamily housing, which is uh, in um, corresponds to the zoning that the land currently is. And there were 180 units proposed with that, um, which which included 85 to 125 trips uh, per the peak hour. So there was analysis that included the additional development. Um, so with that additional traffic, the offsite traffic of the proposed multifamily land use and the proposed commercial and multifamily development, the State Trunk Highway 93 and Lorch Avenue intersection still operates with the improvements of the extension of the eastbound left turn lane. Thank you. I see uh, Mr. Hagen also has his hand up. Mr. Hagen? Oh, I. Mr. I Hagen, did you have I something to say? I don't have any further questions. Okay. Uh, one moment, please. Mr. Erickson, did you have something to add? Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Leah did address it just like uh, it, it, we needed to identify that yellow proposed multifamily to fully and accurately understand the traffic on Lorch with this development and future developments. And um, she hit it out of the park describing it. We had to identify, we have put a proposed use to it. Um, to Mr. Frazee's uh, point that when it gets to him, there's there's still gonna be room and capacity on this uh, road to handle his future land build outs, I guess is the point I just wanna bring home is that it wasn't forgotten it's uh, analyzed at a certain use and type of building structure to be there with a number of residents, so it was fully um, accounted for. Just to be fair for the whole system and the city's understanding of what's happening with their road system. So I thank you very much, Ms. Ness, and I thank you. Um, if Mr. Fraze has more questions, maybe myself or Ms. Ness could answer them. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Fraze, are you still there? Yes. Okay, do you have, uh, did, did any of those comments ask, answer your concerns? Yes. 
Are you hearing me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, last question that it was, um, they're saying family dwelling uh, for the yellow square. What size of multi? Because I'm there. I'm there, and they're calling family dwelling. You know, like these great big monster buildings with three to them. Are they gonna? Are you, you know, the big three quarters on my end. That, that's, you know, that's my You know, he met a hundred. So and I'm not sure how many buildings that is. But, or, you know, the duplexes, or what are they, what are they considering multifamily in there? Okay. 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 Uh... You were cutting out a little bit, Mr. Fraze. Do you have a speaker on there? Uh, no. No? Actually, I, I do. Okay. But can you hear me now? I think that sounds better. Could you repeat that again, please? I was just... I was, the, the, they're, all, they're saying on, my, on the yellow square there... They're calling it a multifamily. Is it three-story multifamily? Like, like they're a big one? Or, or is it just uh, three families or four plexes? What do they have uh, in the yellow square for, for, you know, for multifamily? Okay. Um, I see Ms. Ness has her hand up again. Ms. Ness? That's a great question. What was estimated at this time is 180 units. So that could be a duplex or a triplex or it, any any number, but it's, it's by the number of units, so 180 units. And if it gets into the future and something else is changed, we would require the same type of traffic analysis of the future development if it generates more than 100 trips during the peak hour. So um, similar proposed development would have to go through the same process as what this development is going through to look at the traffic in the future. And it may just be an update to the traffic impact analysis that was completed for this project. Okay, and I see Mr. Hagen has his hand up. Mr. Hagen? I, I must not be able to turn this off. <laughs> okay, all right. Let me check back with Mr. Fraze. Mr. Fraze, anything to add? Um, no, I think... I see my hand is still raised too, but um, yeah, I believe that the uh, the, the commission knows, um, you know, my concerns. So, you know, the bigger the bigger that the, the first development, it it makes mine smaller. So you know, it's kind of black and white there. Um, and then um, I believe what the you guys, as the planning commission, decide. Doesn't the city city council agree with that, or how does that work? Uh, Mr. Hagen or Mr. Fraze, I, I think I can answer that question. The city council will have to um, uh, address the zoning change. But the general development plan and the uh, certified survey map with right-of-way dedication uh, will be decided tonight by the plan commission. But regardless, uh, if, if the plan commission agrees to the zoning change, then it will be in front of the city council. But also remember that uh, the city council has a, a public hearing uh, 
uh, phase of their meeting on Monday nights. So regardless whether this item goes to city council or, or regardless uh, whether the uh, general development plan and certified survey map which actually is addressed by the city council, you will be able to speak to them about it. Does that answer your question? It does. Okay, thank yeah. you. All right, let me see if there are any questions from the commission for Mr. Fraze. Okay, then uh, we will see if there are any other members of the public who are in attendance that wish to speak on this item. And uh, oh, Mr. Allen, did you have something to add? Let me make sure. I think Mr. Allen is still unmuted. He makes, yes, he is. There. Okay. That, was that what the interference was with Mr. Fraze? Okay. That, it was entirely my fault, Mr. Fraze? Yes, no offense to Mr. Erickson, so yes, we have to Okay. Um, so let's see if there's a motion on the commission for this item. Commissioner Seymour. Thank you. Um, are we doing them together or are we doing them separate? Well, let me All see. We would ordinarily do them together unless oh. somebody asks okay. for a separate vote. In that case, I will move uh, approval of this item. Thank you. Mr. Granlund. I will second that. Thank you. And uh, I know Ms. Wolfgram has comments. We'll start with her. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Wolfgram. Oops. Thank you, Chairperson Larson. And again, I would ask if my comments could be read into the minutes, please. Without objection, they will be. Thank you. Uh, so I very much appreciate the comprehensive presentation and level of detail. I support the rezoning of the properties request from TR1A to C3P and R3P and the other asks. I had originally voted no on December 2nd, 2019, premised primarily on two things. The first being that our multifamily design manual is guided by ensuring that affordability and sustainability will be integrated in new projects. There had been no commitment to affordability in the first presentation. The second related to the first is that in this area are many low wage part-time workers, including but not limited to Fleet Farm, Action City, Florian Gardens, Metropolis Hotel, Geno's Pizza and others. These workers are priced out of housing near their workplaces, many spending 40 to 50% of their income on housing. I was not able at that time in good conscience to vote yes without a commitment to a certain percentage of workforce housing units. Since that initial presentation, I want to acknowledge Mr. Hagen's willingness to collaborate with community members, including the Jonah Affordable Housing Task Force, and finding a way to commit 10% of his units to workforce housing, again, targeting renters earning 60 to 100% of the AMI, making an important contribution to meeting the needs of workers in this area. Mr. Hagen provided multiple letters of support from his business neighbors who all supported his development. I want to note specifically Benny Anderson, Resort General Manager of Action City, who stated in his letter, quote unquote, that the initial reaction from our staff was excitement about being able to have a place where they could walk to work from, end of quote. Mr. Hagen is demonstrating with these changes that he is a community stakeholder, admittedly having strong roots in the Eau Claire area spanning over 50 years. 
our city can then best support him to be flexible, supporting the rezoning as well as his other requests. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Obeyed. Thank you, Chairperson Larson. Um, I just wanted to make a comment uh, regarding the approval of the Renewable Energy Action Plan. Um, I would just like to ask that the developer take into consideration the net zero building guide, solar ready guide, and electrical vehicle compatibility, if possible. Thank you, Commissioner Obeyed. Commissioner Gregor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I can see myself supporting this. Obviously, I supported it last time. I um, I feel like a lot of the transportation concerns are addressed. I, I do think that density is is fine to maintain here at the same number of units, um, partly because the more we put dense housing here, the the less we end up building further, even further out into the into the countryside, and, and have even further um, commutes. Um, a few, I, I do think that the um, the layout of these buildings is is not really as desirable, in my opinion, as the the other layout um, that we saw um, last year. But I, I think ultimately um, some of that. Can be adjusted when we get to the to the site plan level. Um, the but I am certainly impressed that you know about the work of the Jonah Affordable Housing Task Force and the the developer to to work together and and kind of bring some of that citizen voice and concern to the issue of affordable housing and um, and certainly appreciate the, all the letters of support from the. From the neighboring property owners and business owners, I think that really helps a lot to give some perspective on the importance of this project to the community. So, so I plan to support it. Thank you, Commissioner Gregert. Any other comments from the commission? Seeing none, we will. Uh, Call the roll on this, beginning with uh, Commissioner Brenholt. Aye. Commissioner Granland. Aye. Commissioner Gregor. Oh, I accidentally muted you, Jeremy. <laughs> Commissioner Gregor. Aye. Commissioner Wolfgram. Aye. Commissioner Obeyed. Aye. Commissioner Peterson. Aye. Commissioner Christofferson. Aye. Commissioner Seymour. Aye. And uh, Commissioner Larson votes aye. So that item passes. Congratulations. We've made it through one item. Uh, all right. Thank you. I, I, think, uh, I think it's going okay so far. It's a little slower than we're used to, but uh, we'll, we'll press on. So item number two is a public hearing to recommend uh, for City Council's approval of a site plan for XL Energy at 1501 Black Avenue. Mr. Petrie. Mr. Petrie will be presenting this item. Mr. Larson, sir. Uh, stand by one moment. Ready and we will, uh, oh, switch over okay. To Mr. Petrie, you're unmuted. The slideshow as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, before you tonight is a public zoning uh, site plan for XL Energy located on uh, 1501 Black Avenue. The owner and applicant is uh, Excel Energy. The property owner is actually under the Northern States Power Company. The architect is Chief Corporation, and they are on the line this evening. 
the uh, site plan in front of you, it, here shows an over, over, overview map of the existing facility that they have access on. And here's the proposed site plan. The proposal is approximately for two buildings. Uh, the first building is approximately 29,000 square feet for cold storage. Um, actually, for that's for the uh, service center building. And then there's a cold storage facility uh, on the eastern part of the uh, site for 9,000 square feet. Uh, this is broken down into two phases. Uh, the first phase would be the, the 29,000 square foot building and the 9,000 square foot building, but phase two would be the additional uh, to the south end of the proposed uh, larger building. They are proposing a 28,000 square foot future addition. Uh, with this proposal, they are adding a significant amount of parking to the to the site with 20, uh, 46 stalls, four bicycle stalls. And this facility would not be open to the public. They are adding a driveway uh, onto Black Avenue. Um, to approach the site, and that driveway is over the maximum 30 foot wide that the Planning Commission will review tonight. That is for large trucks to maneuver. It's approximately 70 foot wide at the property line. Uh, there is a narrative in the proposal as well from the applicant. The parcel is approximately 14 acres. Uh, again, it's zone P public uh, for, for this public facility. Uh, there is a proposed CSM in your packet that is not on the slides, but they are proposing to divide this off with the main parcel. Also tonight for review is of the large gravel area. Uh, the Planning Commission and Council will need to find that the minimum improvement standards are, are appropriate in this situation. We have tried to work with the applicant to make sure that there were some screening uh, along the frontage roads uh, to block the, the gravel storage area. There is some standards in your packet this evening. Also, there's a landscape plan showing street trees and trees along the eastern property line to train from the neighbors. Uh, ex exterior lighting and dumpster enclosure shall be in compliance with the city code. And like I mentioned, the CSM will be reviewed by staff uh, at a later date. In your report is the grading and drainage, public utility and uh, transit and traffic uh, impact. Uh, with that, we are recommending a couple conditions. Um, that are under the recommendation. And with that, I'll be standing for any questions this evening. Thank you. Any questions from the commission for Mr. Petrie? I see none. Is the applicant here? If you could raise your hand, because I don't know which name to call on. Leonard Shry. Mr. Schreiber. Uh, yeah, we, we have put the plans together for uh, Excel and RP, RSP architects out of the cities um, for a new service center. And as you uh, see, if anybody has any questions, I can try to answer them. Okay, any questions from the commission? Commissioner Peterson. Yes, back when I was doing the, the 53 bypass study back in the 1980s, we ran into zones uh, centered on the liquefied natural gas tank, which prohibited development uh, in three concentric circles. And I'm just wondering if that applies to uh, the property owner or just the adjacent properties. I couldn't find anything on the U.S. Department of Energy um, uh, website. I have been in contact, unfortunately, just recently Friday with Sean Levy at Excel Energy up in uh, Intergrove Heights, and uh, he was unable to get back to me before today's meeting. I'm just wondering whether you know of any restrictions by uh, U.S. Department of Energy, any other federal agency, or Excel Energy themselves on construction within so many feet of that liquefied natural gas tank. Mr. Schreiber. Yeah, I guess it's my understanding is that um, we we do not we actually looked into um, how far away we are from that um, you know um, area that you're talking about to the south, kind of east there, and we are we are not restricted to uh, anything that we could find or un uncover um, as as to what you talked about. 
Okay, these zones actually extended far west of Black Avenue, so I'll, I'll check with Sean and, and uh, if he or I come up with any information between now and the City Council meeting, I'll pass that on. Very well. Any other questions from the Commission? I see none. Thank you, Mr. Schreiber. This is a public hearing. Are there any members of the public who came to speak on this item tonight? I'll ask one more time if there are any members of the public that came to speak. All right, I see none. Is there a motion on the commission? Mr. Wolfgram. I will move to approve. Is there a second? Commissioner Brenholt. I'll second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Um, Mr. Brenhold, is your hand up from the second, or is, do you have comments? Sorry about that. All right. Uh, Commissioner Peterson. Yeah, I will do my best to get some information from Sean Levy of XL Energy on these uh, um, no construction zones that were back there in the 1980s. They may have disappeared by now. Um, I can't find them on the internet anywhere. But Sean should be able to, to um, enlighten us about that in time for the city council meeting. Okay, um, any other comments? Then we will call the roll. Commissioner Brenholt. Commissioner Granlund. Aye. Commissioner Gregert. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Wolfgram. Aye. Commissioner Obeyed. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Peterson. Aye. Mr. Christopherson. Aye. Commissioner Seymour. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That item passes. Congratulations to XL Energy. And we'll move on to item number three, which is a public discussion to recommend approval for an annexation on the southwest corner of Vine Street and Rosewood Street. Mr. Allen. This shows a little bit better uh, general area from an aerial map. Um, the property owners, uh, the Weisses, have submitted this petition uh, for vacant land. As you can see here, it is vacant. Uh, look at the southeast corner of the uh, intersection of uh, West Vine Street and Rosewood Lane, in currently in the town of Union, adjacent to uh, Sea uh city limits. The uh, property is located uh, within the sewer service area for the city. Uh, water and sanitary sewer are available 
along both streets. Our request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. In terms of future uses, uh, we don't have anything uh, specific uh, submitted to uh, to staff or uh, to the department at this time, but um, we we do understand there is a interest in uh, residential development again, which would be consistent with the comprehensive plan uh, moving forward. So, uh, and I should say, uh, low density residential development consistent with the surrounding neighborhood. So, I uh, will stand for any questions. Any questions from the commission for Mr. Allen? I see none. Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant here? You said it was Mr. Weiss or Mrs. Weiss? Mrs. Weiss? I don't see their name on here. All right. Um, and this is for public discussion. Is there a motion on the, whoop, Mark Erickson. Mr. Erickson, did you have your, are you representing the Weisses? Uh, I, good day folks. I am on behalf of this project gonna be part of the future process of it, but yes, the annexation um, is consistent with the adjacent, like Mr. Allen said, and um, they are going to uh, ultimately do a rezoning to be conforming to the R1 zoning around and um, ultimately probably put single family residents on this parcel. Not to a max density by any means, but a sparse population. Okay, are there questions from the commission for Mr. Erickson? I see none. Is there a motion on the commission to uh, approve this? Commissioner Peterson. I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve the annexation. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Christopherson. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Commissioner Gregert? Mr. Gregor, did you have Sorry, a comment? I mean to push the, the hand raising button. Uh, I, I actually, uh, it goes so much quicker if the people in the room here make the motion in the second. <laughs> so I, I let uh, Mr. Christofferson second that. Any discussion? All right, we will call the roll. Commissioner Brenholt. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Greg uh, Granland. Aye. Commissioner Gregert. Aye. Commissioner Wolfgram. Aye. Commissioner Obeyed. Aye. Commissioner Peterson. Aye. Mr. Christofferson? Aye. Mr. Seymour? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That item passes. Item number four is uh, a public discussion for recommendation to City Council a final condo plat for 222 Water Street Condominium Third Addendum. Uh, Mr. Petrie. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Before you tonight is a condo plat amendment. Can you speak a little louder, please? Oh, yes. Uh, this is 222 Water Street condo. Uh, let me turn my volume up just a little here. Okay. Uh, Real Land Surveying is the applicant this evening. Uh, the property owner for this uh, condo is John Mogensen's group. They're not changing any of the land use. What they're doing with this condo is unit number one. Uh, is the existing vacant, uh, actually future home of Quick Trip. They are taking over unit one and also they're taking over the parking lot out to the east of the uh, commercial building. Uh, the land use of the, the remaining two and three and four stories are remaining the same. Uh, the, the rest of uh, units one through six are remaining the same. The only difference is their unit one will have tied 
the parking lot and uh, the commercial space uh, for that tenant. The Planning Commission has approved this in the past. Uh, this is the, like I mentioned before, the third addendum to the condo plat. The City Council will review this uh, at their next meeting on April 14th. The City Attorney's Office is re reviewing the documents for the declaration of the condo. And then the City Surveyor is in, in the process of reviewing the condo plat as shown. Uh, with that, I'd be standing for any questions this evening. Thank you. Any questions from the Commission? I see none. And I'm going to take a I'm going to take a, a shot and say that Mr. Bohan might be here to talk about this. Mr. Bohan? Hello, Mr. Bohan? Sean Bohan. Hi, he has his hand up. Go ahead and speak. Hmm. Mr. Bohan might be having some microphone problem. Well, Mr. Allen, any suggestions? Uh, is it showing Mr. Bohan as um, connected via computer or via phone? Uh, it's got the little headset. Okay, so via computer. So maybe a microphone issue on, on his end. Uh, there's okay. a call-in number that would be a possibility. And for anybody else who's interested in trying to call in as well, it is 408-418-9388. Uh, I'm going to assume Mr. Bohan can hear, but can you repeat that again for him? Sure. The uh, audio only is uh, for dial-in is uh, area code 408-418-9388. And there's an access code. It's a nine-digit access code, and that is 968-698-389. So 968 698 389. If you wish to, Mr. Bohan will give you a work. couple of moments here. Yeah, hopefully that will work. You can call in. I can't guarantee that will work, but uh, and again, we do not have the chat feature available to us. So, From what I saw, it says media and audio can be listened to using this audio conference. No interaction available. So I don't know if he can speak or just listen. It may be able to, Mr. Larson may be able to allow him to speak through that. <coughs> you you may need to make him a panelist, though, at that point. Make him a panelist? If he's, uh, that might be If he option. calls in? Yeah, that would be an option. Or even as he's in there now, that may be an op option to make him a panelist for the short period of time hmm. he's here. Yikes. No, I don't want to expel him. Made him a panelist. Mr. Bohan, can you try speaking again? No, we're not hearing you. Um, Oh, this is new territory. <laughs> uh, I guess 
another alternative. I know others have been sending emails. If that's uh, certainly, if there are any additional comments that you would like to offer, you could certainly send me an email. I know he does have my email address, so or even to Mr. Petrie, who's also on the line. I wish I had a better option, but again, if there, it right. seems to me there be, it's likely a technical issue on Mr. Bohan's side, since we've not had this with others. I am, uh, I'm reluctant to proceed with this without hearing from him. Um, we can certainly um, come back to this item if you'd like. And we can figure out how to hear from him separately. All right. Uh, Again, I, I think what we'll do is ask Mr. Bohan to send an email yes, to, me or Mr. to either Mr. Allen or Mr. Petrie. If we hear from uh, from you, Mr. Bohan, we will come back to this item. In the meantime, if there is no objection on the commission, we will proceed to number five, laying number four on the table uh, until we can return to it. Is there any objection to that? Okay. Uh, Check one more thing here. Because something. They have no time constraints on, on this work. They have no time constraints? For the work on Forestry, it's not holding up. I, I, I believe it's. Uh, I believe they do in terms of uh, transferring some of the uh, ownership uh, through. Okay. Exactly. Well, let's proceed to number fi five, which is a public discussion uh, for approval by the Plan Commission, uh, the Comet Court edition, north of Comet Court and north of Frisbee Lane. Mr. Allen. All right. Uh, thank you. We'll get back to that item here shortly. Uh, number five, again, is uh, north side of uh, Eau Claire. You can see here on the open view map, um, again, in the, the planets area. Uh, it's a little hard to see here, but um, this is a little bit better, kind of zoomed in version of it. Uh, this item, this uh, kind of project has, has gone through a few different phases uh, over the last uh, several months, has been before you in several different um, iterations. Uh, the property owners holds in your homes, and uh, the zoning is R1 for this whole area here. Uh, the property itself is about 1.8 acres. And uh, with uh, the property owner and the applicant, American Land Survey, uh, requesting approval of now a preliminary plat for what is called Comet Court Edition. Uh, again, it's located north of the existing Comet Court, uh, which uh, terminates right at the intersection with Frisbee Lane. A uh, preliminary plat, again, shows eight. It's here, eight single family lots. Uh, it's consistent with uh, previous approvals of the CSM uh, with right away dedication with the official map showing the proposed extension of Comet Court. Uh, all the proposed lots are consistent with R1 zoning district standards. Uh, the street itself for Comet Court addition, uh, the roadway itself is uh, composed of 350 feet of new roadway. The street includes the extension of the existing Comet Court to the proposed cul-de-sac. Uh, back in December, uh, engineering department received a petition for street utility improvements within the dedicated portion right away. A petition for street utility improvements was approved by City Council in January. Uh, all street and public utility improvements will be designed by the City of Eau Claire, constructed by the City's contractor, and are planned to occur uh, yet during the 2020 construction year. Uh, construction will consist of extending the road to match existing cross sections and extension of uh, utilities, water mains, sanitary sewer, and storm sewer. A sidewalk was deferred by City Council uh, since the road itself is less than 700 feet long, or 750 feet long, and there are no existing uh, sidewalks to connect to. Uh, utility easement requests have been sent to 
uh, utilities of Excel, Energy, AT&T, and Charter, and those will be shown in the final plan. The uh, final plan then will be reviewed and considered at a uh, later date. So again, this has gone through a few different uh, parts and pieces uh, moving forward uh, uh, before you uh, a few the last few months, and now is at the preliminary plan stage. And I will stand for any questions. Are there any questions from the commission for Mr. Allen? Mr. Peterson. Looks like there's a couple of lots missing here. Do you know the story behind that? The ones in the northwest corner? Yeah, there are uh, existing, let me see if there's an area out there we go. Uh, those are existing lots uh, that um, are essentially accessed uh, to the north, any lane to the north, and uh, get some to the west as well. So it's kind of yeah, exactly. It looks like a hodgepodge of um, what's being proposed, but simply trying to fit in with some existing um, residential lots already uh, that access other streets. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Allen from the Commission? Thank you, Mr. Allen. The applicant is uh, American Land Surveying. I see we have Mr. Knopf. Uh, Mr. Knopf, go ahead, please. Yes, sir. Um, good evening, uh, Planning Commission. Um, did you have any uh, specific questions you would um, like me to ans answer for you this evening? Looks like we have a question from Mr. Granlund. Mr. Granlund. I don't, I don't think I did. Oh. Sorry. It's all right. My hand slipped. Any questions from the commission for Mr. Knopf? Oh, um, I have none at this time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Knopf. Um, we will see if there is a motion on the commission for approval. Commissioner Christofferson. I move for approval. Mr. Peterson. I'll second it. Thank you. Uh, any, any, uh, comments from any discussion from the Commission I see none so we will call the roll Commissioner Brenholt aye Mr. Granlund aye Commissioner Gregor aye Commissioner Wolfgram Oops, I'm sorry. Aye. All right. Commissioner Obeyed. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Aye. Christofferson. Aye. Seymour. Aye. Chair votes aye. And that passes. Thank you. Uh, let's check real quick with Mr. Bohan. Are you there? No. All right, item number six is uh, public discussion for approval by the plan commission to approve a site plan for a commercial building uh, at 2715 Damon Street. Mr. Petrie. Uh, Mr. Larson, Chairperson, um, the, the same, Sean Bohan is the same applicant for this one, and we, I just got an email from him. And Mr. Allen and I will try to work it and have him call in with a cell phone. But I don't know if you want to go to the next item and then come back and hopefully we have item number four and number six addressed at that time. Okay. Um, we will do that. So item Thank number you. seven is public discussion for approval by the plan commission for a three lot certified survey map on the northwest corner of South Oakwood Hills Parkway and Oakwood Knoll Drive. Uh, Ms. Ness, is that right, Mr. Allen? Yes. Ms. Ness. Oops. Certified survey map? Go ahead, please. 
Thank you, Chairperson Larson. This item is to modify an existing certified survey map. It's located in the Oakwood Hills area. And along South Oakwood Hills Parkway and Oak Knoll Drive. Uh, the proposed modifications create three lots for single family homes within the existing areas labeled as non buildable. The approval of these changes shifted to the city in 2018. Prior to that, any disturbance of slopes greater than 20% we're required to request a type four amendment to the sewer service area plan through the West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission and the Chippewa Eau Claire MPO. Uh, the process of requesting that amendment for the small areas became time intensive and so they uh, relinquished that to the municipalities. So starting in 2018, um, we have the ability to approve disturbances of the 20% slopes, and that's part of this process here. The approval is based on the submittal of an erosion control and a slope stability plan. The applicant for the CSM has submitted such plans and will receive a separate approval letter from the engineering department. Um, if we can go to the slide that has the yellow and orange pinkish area, you can see that uh, the 20 to 30 percent slopes are identified in the yellow areas and the orange pink areas uh, identify the slopes that are greater than 30 percent. Um, so those will get split into the three parcels as shown on the next slide. Um, the applicant submitted the erosion control plan showing the slope stability using retaining walls, EMAT, and silt fence measures. Silt fence measures. Uh, one stipulation of the CSM approval will be to identify the responsible parties before, during, and after the slopes um, should there be any drainage or erosion control issues. So with that, we do um, recommend approval of the modification to the certified survey map. And if you have any questions, I'd be willing to take those. Thank you. Any questions from the commission for uh, Ms. Ness? I see none. And I see that uh, American Land surveying is the applicant again, so I will unmute Mr. Knopf. Mr. Knopf, go yes, ahead, sir. please. Did any uh, any of the uh, commission members have any uh, questions for me this evening? Any questions for Mr. Knopf, Commissioner Peterson? Yeah, yes, with with the uh, erosion control practices put in there. If they were to fail, who's, who's the responsible party for uh, any damages done? Um, I would say um, while it's in the uh, developer's hands, the developer uh, would be the uh, uh, party responsible for any damages. Uh, once the uh, uh, construction would be finalized and the erosion uh, control measures uh, were adequately uh, or deemed uh, adequately installed by the engineer um, at, at that time uh, they would be in the hands of the individual property owner okay I'm, I'm just thinking of the, the worst case scenario that if the damage let's say you get hellacious uh, rains and flooding and it, and it gets into the public right away or the the homes across the street are the property owners going to have enough money or should they get insurance policies that they can cover a catastrophe such as that? Um, I would say that the need to have uh, a, uh, a, a, a catastrophic a failure uh, insurance is uh, more than likely not going to be necessary. Um, Really what we're doing here is going to be uh, typical of what's already been done in the neighborhood. Um, a little bit of history regarding these parcels here and uh, the, 
the reason why they have not been developed is these lots um, had initially been uh, out lots um, due to the fact that they were not um, uh, your, your typical lot to develop back when this uh, uh, the subdivision was created. Um, in addition to that, um, the a portion of South Oakwood Hills uh, Parkway um, had been shifted, um, and also because of the shift, um, this map that you're looking at, the uh, the city's parcel map, uh, does not go does not show the outlots that were uh, part of that shift. So the rea reality is, in order to develop this um, land wholly, irregardless of the um, uh, the engineer's work on it, there, there had to be some survey work involved just to make these lots uh, buildable and have frontage along Oakwood Hills Parkway. I don't know if it does. Does the staff have any um, uh, exhibits which show uh, the previous land subdivisions? It does that not might appear so. with the outlots there. The next one that looks like outlots along the roadways. I know what's, uh, what's being referred to. I, again, yeah, we're just showing this uh, current uh, parcel map uh, as it stands. But yes, as uh, noted, there are, there are kind of two two pieces that connect up to uh, that are essentially under consideration that are being requested to be modified here, if that makes any sense. Commissioner Christofferson. So the uh, slide that we're looking at, those two that are up into the intersection, those are the now uh, being platted as three lots with different lot ones? Correct. Thank you. But again, it doesn't show them as, <clears throat> as outlaws, as Mr. Knopf was saying. There's um, a different original plat that shows uh, more specifically like an outlot uh, configuration. This here looks as though all these are just two buildable lots, but but truly, as it was originally platted, there was the outlot situation. Any uh, other questions from the commission? Thank you, Mr. Knopf. Right, there, thank you. Is there a uh, a motion on the commission for approval? Commissioner Seymour. Thank you. I move approval. Second. Commissioner Christofferson seconds. Any discussion? Um, seeing none, we will call the roll. Mr. Brenholt. Aye. Granlund. Aye. Gregert. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Wolfgram. Aye. Obeyed. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Christopherson. Aye. Seymour. Aye. Chair votes aye, and that passes. Let's check with Mr. Petrie since he's been in communication with. Mr. Bohan, I don't and see Mr. Bohan on I, here. I have as well, uh, Mr. Chair. I see oh. Mr. Bohan is on as a panelist. I'm seeing here on, on this end. So you may be able to uh, unmute him. Mr. Bohan, can you hear me? No, he, he still shows on his computer, which uh, has been the source of his microphone problem. He, he also did call in. I don't know if there is a way to. Yeah, but I don't see him anywhere. He may be caller, um, oh, caller six. Caller Maybe. six? Or is that uh, our? Hold on. Mr. Mr. Bohan? Can you hear me? Yes. 
Is that Mr. Bohan? Great. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. This is uh, Eric Larson. So now that we have you, we will go back to item number four, which was uh, the uh, third addendum for the condominium at 222 Water Street. We received a presentation from Mr. Allen, I think it was. No, Mr. Petrie about that. Do you have anything to add? Um, I do not at this time. And, and I, I do want to apologize. I probably should have stayed at work. We had everything working at there and I thought I could get it working at home, but I don't have any of my kids around, so they couldn't show me how to use them. So, <laughs> again, I want, to apologize. I want to apologize for that. <laughs> okay. Um, but I do not have anything to add to item number four. Okay. Are there any questions from the commission for Mr. Bohan? Mr. Uh, Commissioner Peterson. Now, I think Mr. Petrie explained that one of the, the tenants in the building was also going to have the parking lot as part of their part of the condominium. Yeah, I, I guess I can't really speak to this item. Um, you know, real land surveying, it was their submittal, so I'm not really involved with it. So um, I don't really know much about it other than just like the location and everything with, with the condo. So. I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, when we first approved this, it was like the, the parking lot was able to be used by everyone in the building. Does that still stand with this being a condominium plan now? Um, I, can't, I can't really speak to that. I apologize again. Um, you know, it would be something that either real land surveying or the, uh, the owner would end up having to, um, you know, talk about and stuff. I don't, I don't really know whether that would be available to other tenants or not. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission for Mr. Bohan regarding item number four, the condo plat? All right. I see none. Is there a motion on the commission to approve this item? Mr. Christofferson. I move to approve. Mr. Seymour. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on item number four? Mr. Peterson. I, I know parking is very critical in this area, and I know with this um, development, they got some parking across the street on university land, but I'm still puzzled by why one of the people who are going to be one of the condominium owners has control over the parking lot at maybe the expense of the other condominium owners. And so I'm kind of reluctant to approve this. Okay. Uh, Mr. Granlund. I, it seems to me that that uh, the retail establishment on that east end was always meant to have a fairly high access to that parking lot because we reviewed even truck turning radiuses and the delivery of semi loads due to the fact that the first the um, the first expected tenant was was a, a possibly a grocery store type uh, circumstance. I recall we'd actually looked at truck turning radiuses and that this lot was essentially a retail lot for all hours of the, uh, the business day at least and not a, not a tenant parking for uh, residents. Okay. Mr. Seymour. Thank you. Um, just to echo uh, what Mr. Granlin said, I. I seem to remember that being the case too, that um, this parking lot wasn't included in the um, parking count for the uh, residents of the building. Any other discussion? 
Commissioner Peterson. That's ringing a bell now. I remember okay. it was going to be a grocery store and that this was going to be more exclusively for their use, for the tenants, for the residents. They were going to be elsewhere. And the other businesses uh, had some parking in the rear, if I remember correctly. So thanks, Mr. Granlin and Mr. Seymour. All right. Any other discussion? Then we will call the roll. Mr. Brenholt. Aye. Granlund. Aye. Gregert. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Wolfgram. Aye. Obeyed. Oh, sorry, I muted. Aye. You. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Seymour? Aye. Chair votes aye. And that passes. Now we still have item number six to finish up. Uh, item number six is for approval by the Plan Commission a uh, site plan for a commercial, bu commercial building at 2715 Damon Street. Mr. Petrie. Uh, thank you, Chairman uh, Larson. Uh, before you that is the Chippewa Valley Eye Clinic, located at 2715 David Street, number six on your map. Uh, there is the uh, aerial photograph showing the building. That building has been removed and demo. Uh, they did have a fire uh, last year at the facility. The property is approximately 2.7 acres. You may remember the rezoning uh, last year. They did uh, purchase a portion of the city of Eau Claire's uh, pond to the south southwest. The new proposal uh, is shown on the screen as a two-story, 22,000 square foot approximate building with multiple entrances for employees and customers. The site plan also shows 125 parking stalls with the potential to add 31 more stalls on the south end of the parking lot as well as the east end of the parking lot um, along Town Hall Road, or South Town Road, pardon me. Uh, the parking lot does have four accesses, two on uh, London Road and two on South Town Road. The, the staff has reviewed both of them, uh, or all four of them, pardon me, and um, in our report we are recommending that the southernmost along London Road for the drive through uh, for the dumpster enclosure appears to be unnecessary. Uh, that is a significant amount of paving. Uh, along that street frontage and it only appeared to be accessing the dumpster enclosure. Also, staff reviewed the parking lot um, along with the engineering department. Um, they added uh, a cut through. Uh, pretty much you can go from London Road to South Town Road and without even trying to turn. Um, and we didn't think that was necessary. So the nor northernmost driveway on London Road or on to South Town Road uh, could be eliminated or relocated uh, if this commission decides so. Uh, in the end, it's up to the commission to decide which driveways are eliminated. The recommendation from staff would be both of those would be eliminated and they would have one access from each road. The proposed elevations are also shown on the building plans and architecture features showing the new commercial building. The landscape plan shows foundation plantings and street trees along with bicycle parking. Dumpster enclosure shall be noted uh, in compliance with city standards. Uh, the sidewalk connections are, are appear to be uh, shown on the site plan. Also, it might be an issue with the snow and ice removal on the north end of the building. Uh, that would be facing north. Uh, in your packet, there is the, the floor plan and uh, narrative. The exterior lighting should be provided by city code as well. Radio and drainage, public utilities, transit, and traffic is more than the report. Again, I would just note that uh, it's up to the commission to decide what they want to do with the driveways, but staff is recommending the southernmost driveway to be eliminated on London uh, and also the northernmost driveway on South Town Drive to be eliminated. Uh, with that, the property uh, was resolved to C3P, uh, and this is consistent with the general development plan that was approved by this commission and city council. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions from the commission for Mr. Petrie? Uh, 
All right. I see none. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner Peterson. In, in Mr. Petrie, in looking at their proposed site plan, it looks like uh, the parking on the, the north side of the, the lot is probably predominantly for their customers coming in the front of the building. And it looks like the uh, parking on the east side of the building is probably for staff. Um, um, so they had three driveways before, one to London, one to Damon, and one to Southtown. Um, I can't see uh, the real utility of the south driveway and London Road, but I would be in favor of allowing them both the north driveways on London Road and on Southtown, and then also allow them to have the south driveway on, on Southtown Road also. And as far as uh, snow removal, with it being, yes, it's the south or the north end of the building, but the majority of buildings along the south side of Claremont Avenue, along those frontage roads, um, all have their entrances to the north, and, and I, I don't see a, a real concern there. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Petrie? All right, uh, and this is Mr. Bohan again. Let me see if I can find him. And Mr. Bohan, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Do you have anything to add? Uh, I, yes, I do. Um, as far as the driveways, um, you know, there is three driveways existing right now. Um, one accessing each of the roads, London, Damon, and Southtown. Um, and Mr. Peterson is correct in the, in the sense where um, the southern part of the eastern lot um, ends up being for employees, and the actual employee entrance ends up being on the south side of the building. So we, we wanted to have an access that was there for them so it wasn't intermixing necessarily with clients, customers, and stuff in the north. Um, so we, we are asking that we end up at least being able to have the same amount of driveways that currently exists for the site. Um, Damon Street, I mean, we would prefer not to probably have to come off of Damon Street. We prefer to have the two on Southtown. I believe we can work the London Road, the trash enclosure, um, or, or for the trash and everything, um, maybe in combining those. But we'd certainly like to end up trying to keep Southtown with the two access points if we can. Um, if that's not permissible, then we'd have to maybe look and see if we can put another one back out on Damon Street. Um, there is a lot of traffic. There's 125 stalls, possibility of 30 more. Um, so it'd be nice to end up having, you know, three access uh, points and exits and stuff for the site. Okay, Commissioner Peterson, or er, uh, Christofferson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm wondering if the staff's concern was that that makes it almost a, a thoroughfare from London to Southtown. And if that's the case, would it be possible to just move the entry on London Road a little bit closer to the, the intersection? Could you move that at all, or is that not, not doable? Go ahead, Mr. Bohan. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure that we'd want to probably try to move it closer to an intersection. I know that there's a... There's a couple of things out there. Number one is that there is a, um, a utility pole that ends up being just to the north of that driveway. Um, so if we try to take it further to the north, it certainly ends up uh, being a pretty big expense to try getting that relocated. Um, that would be, I guess, the first thing. And then the second one would be just putting it closer to an intersection. Um, you know, we tried to make sure that they're a little bit of a distance from, from Damon Street and everything just in case... Um, you know, people, they just don't want to have anything backing up if people are kind of pulling in, going slow, and then pulling in and stuff to the uh, to the actual parking lots. Um, but we could, you know, possibly on um, South Town, whether we end up maybe, instead of a straight shot, whether that one can be maybe be moved a little bit further to the south. Um, it's going to end up being a little bit closer to the, to the second one that we're requesting, but we can end up at least putting some... You know, the potential for um, that driveway access to be, you know, more 
curved and stuff rather than, you know, just a, a through way. Um, I don't really anticipate anybody using it to kind of cut over to South Town, seeing as, you know, Damon's only another 75 feet or 100 feet up. Um, it seems foolish to kind of go through the front of, you know, this. And, and while they might drop somebody off and then go run and do errands or something like that, certainly they could do something like that, but it certainly isn't going to be someone trying to take a shortcut to get over to London when you're having to deal with a parking lot and pedestrians and all that type of stuff. So, Thank you. Commissioner Peterson. I, I agree with Mr. Bohan on keeping those, those two northerly driveways as far away from Damon Street as possible. Uh, just so you don't interfere with the intersections of London and Damon to Damon and Southtown. And I also agree with Mr. Bohan that if Damon Street is available for me to go east-west, I don't know why I would come in one of these driveways and out the other with the, the slower traffic and, and all the uh, possible obstacles and, and uh, uh, problems with coming through a private, private parking lot. Any other questions for Mr. Bohan? Thank you, Mr. Bohan. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, Mr. Gregert. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is uh, so, Mr. Bohan. The uh, so, say for example, the south um, driveway on London Road were to be eliminated. Um, one of my thoughts is I think it would be good to have another pedestrian connection from the London Road side. And would you think it would work um, to to use the southern on the southern edge of the um, the northern London Road entrance to to create a sidewalk connection over to the building there and just kind of create that continuity of sidewalk connection all the way across the property? Yeah, I mean, we, we were having some, <clears throat> some issues with some of the grades and stuff. Um, otherwise, we would have taken the sidewalk, um, you know, straight across um, from London Road to basically the front of the building. But we just ended up for ADA accessibility and stuff, and, and we were just having some issues. Um, now that we end up having, you know, if that drive is eliminated, we can certainly end up kind of, you know, looking at that connection and stuff going, you know, straight through to London. They're still going to have to, we still have to end up dealing with, you know, trash, whether there's, um, you know, they're able to come in, back in, and then pick it up. Um, but I, I think that we definitely have the ability to try to end up making it more of a straight shot rather than coming along that southernmost access road on London. Okay. So you think a sidewalk connection would work? You just have to be creative about it? Yeah, we will, we'll just have to, we'll have to uh, just look at the grades again and, and uh, make sure that we got the ADA accessibility was the biggest thing with our slopes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're uh, welcome. Any other questions for Mr. Bohan? Uh, Mr. Gregor, you're, you're done? Yeah, sorry. Okay. That's all right. Okay, we will uh, call the question and uh, call the roll. Mr. Brenholt. Aye. Oh, I'm, I've gotten ahead of myself. Uh, let's see if there's a motion first. Mr. Peterson. I'll make a motion to approve the site, land, site plan with the removal of the southernmost access to London Road and for the uh, site plan to try, if all feasible, to show a sidewalk connection between just south of the north driveway, the south side of the north driveway on London Road and the sidewalk in front of the north side of the building. Is there a second? Commissioner Seymour. Second. All right. 
So now uh, we will see if there's any discussion. Commissioner Gregor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, just I, I think I can support this um, project. It's it's a uh, I think actually having that continuity across the the property east west, you know, for drivers as well as for pedestrians is is a benefit. Ultimately, I, I don't necessarily see people speeding through very quickly, and and I think it just helps people. I think it's less confusing, which I think is also a safer um, way to go. And, um, so, so yeah, I appreciate the inclusion as well of the uh, in the motion to have the sidewalk connect on the west and um, and eliminate the south driveway on London Road. Thanks. Any other di discussion? Seeing none, we will call the roll. Commissioner Brenholt. Aye. Commissioner Granlund. Aye. Gregor. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Wolfgram. Aye. Commissioner Obeyed. Aye. Mr. Peterson? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Seymour? Aye. And chair votes aye. So item number six passes. We will now move on to item number eight, starting with code compliance items. I see none. I'm always afraid someone's uh, is having trouble getting their hand raised, but we'll move on. Uh, future agenda items. Mr. Chair. Mr. Allen. Thank you. Uh, just real, real briefly, I uh, should note that uh, at the moment, um, we do not have any items to present to you for the next meeting on April 20th. Well, that'll be a short meeting. It could very well be. <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, any other future agenda items from the commission? Um, any additions or corrections to the minutes? Thank you everyone for your patience and uh, congratulations on making it through our very first virtual meeting. Uh, this, without objection, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, PO Box 5148 Eau Claire, Wisconsin, 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.